Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's get into the Word of God. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter number three, as we continue our Bible character series, looking at the uh, Bible character named Eve uh, in Genesis. <clears throat> so let's go to Genesis three, and we're going to read verses nine, yeah, nine through thirteen. All right. The Bible says, starting with verse number nine. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I have I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And let's take a look at what uh, what man said. <clears throat> and the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. So immediately, Adam plays the blame game. He blames Eve. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And what does woman do? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So you could see that both Adam and Eve played the blame game. Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. First and foremost, right off the bat, you can see how very difficult it is when we are caught in our sin and the shame that is involved with that sin to actually own up to what we've done. Because <clears throat> Adam can blame Eve all he wants, but Adam's sin was Adam's fault alone. Adam chose to sin against God. Same thing with Eve, right? Eve can go ahead and blame the serpent. Yeah, I mean, it's true. The, uh, <clears throat> the serpent lied, the serpent beguiled, and, and, um, but at the same time, it was still her conscious decision to disobey God. Not the serpents. The serpent did not force her to sin against God. That was a willful choice of Eve. And instead of owning up to it and saying, I'm sorry, God, it, I, I sinned against you. She said, but it was his fault. And so, you know, immediately we can see, <clears throat> you know, owning up to mistakes, owning up to sin. It's easier said than done. It's very difficult but it's something that we must do. The Bible says if <clears throat> we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, so we must, even as believers, I understand, you know, when we're saved, all of our sins are under the blood. Nevertheless, uh, you know, we still, as long as we still live in this flesh, it is something we're going to have to deal with and we're going to have to get God involved. And there are many times we're going to have to come before him with a contrite heart and get right with God and acknowledge any trespasses or iniquities, uh, you know, that we have committed against him. And, but he is faithful and just to forgive us every single time. <clears throat> but next, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, next thing that, that uh, you know, we can learn from this story is that you see how uh, Eve mimicked Adam in playing the blame game, right? Because Adam was the first one to blame Eve. And so what, is, what does she do? She copies him. She copies him and blames the serpent because she's thinking, oh, I can do that? Oh, okay, well, then I'm not, I'm not going to admit to my sin. It, it was the serpent's fault, <clears throat> you know? It just goes to show how our actions can, can affect the thinking and even the actions of another person. You know, we have the power of influence as human beings, whether that be influence uh, to our spouse, to our children, to our friends, to our family, even to our coworkers, our neighbors, those around us, uh, you know, anybody that we, inter we interact with we have a certain power of influence with them and we must wield that that power of influence 
responsibly and especially biblically. You know, every, <clears throat> every ounce of influence that we have should be used and directed at bringing people to Christ every single time. Otherwise, not only is it meaningless and vain, um, but, but it can actually be destructive if it is not biblically based. And so we have to uh, absolutely pay attention to the influence that we have on other people. And on the, on, on the other side of that coin is that we can see how very easily influenced people are as well, right? Eve immediately learned from Adam that you can blame other people and not own up to sin. And so what did she do? She copied him. She mimicked him. Right? And so Adam has a responsibility, but Eve also has a responsibility uh, not to be influenced for wrong. Right, <clears throat> So that's the same case with us. We must be careful, not only the power of influence that we have on others, but be careful of the power of influence that other people have on us. Because we are mimicking creatures. You know, we like to mimic. Uh, we, we mimic our parents growing up. A lot of the stuff that we learn how to do we, we, we learned as children by watching our parents, our, our loved ones, our family, uh, you know, and even the friends in school and the teachers, they all had some kind of impact, impact on our lives and how we carry our, ourselves, how we speak, how we treat other people, you know, all of those things. And so we must be careful now, especially as adults, the kind of influence and sphere of influence and power of influence that we allow to be a part of our lives because it can absolutely have an effect on our minds and, 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 and on our relationship with God if we're not careful. I am out of time. Thank you so much for joining me today. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.